Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Yes Buffers and on this channel here we are talking about skincare, hair care and all those sort of things that are supposed to make you look really good into very old age or that is kind of like the the goal on with this uh, channel here. So um, we are trying to uh, talk about uh, a lot of uh, supplements and all that sort of thing. So today we're going to talk about Q10 and uh, we have spoken a little bit about Q10 before. So we spoke about uh, Q10 in the sense that uh, there are two forms. So there is one uh, that is an active form and there is one that is a non-active form or an oxidized form and then there is uh, the one that is the the reduced form and the reduced form that is uh, the one you know as a ubiquinol or ubiquinol and uh, then uh, there is a ubiquinone and that is uh, the one that is uh, oxidated so that is uh, when the body has basically used it but uh, we have uh, previously spoken about uh, which sort of type should you then take when you are choosing a, a supplement so uh, that uh, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, today and uh, i will say that uh, if you uh, watch uh, the end of this video here you will uh, be very very much wiser as to how to go about taking a ubiquinone or ubiquinol if you like but uh, the thing here is that uh, we have previously spoken about that uh, the thing is with uh, ubiquinol is that when you are taking it as a supplement, what happens uh, in your body is that it turns into ubiquinone and it does that before your body can actually take it up, so before it comes into your bloodstream. In other words, when you're taking ubiquinol, well, what is taken up and goes into the bloodstream is basically ubiquinone. And that is because uh, ubiquinol that is being oxidized in your uh, stomach and in the digestive tract and uh, that sort of thing. And therefore, uh, it is not that clever to take a uh, ubiquinol. It's uh, a lot better to take a uh, ubiquinone, or at least, well, if you're thinking about it in a financial sense, because you know that is usually very, very expensive. And uh, one of the reasons for that is that uh, it is really difficult to uh, make uh, ubiquinone into ubiquinol and keep it sort of like stable in that form. And uh, that's why it's uh, a lot more uh, expensive. Now, uh, there are uh, a company that is called uh, Pharma Noir, and uh, I've spoken briefly about them before. And uh, the thing is that uh, they are actually producing something called uh, ubiquinone, so they are using uh, that form. And they are just also saying that that is uh, the best form because you cannot turn into ubiquinone anyway. But the thing is that uh, you would like to have uh, ubiquinone to be uh, taken up by your body in an easy uh, way. So it has to be uh, bioavailable and that uh, sort of thing. So uh, the thing is that uh, they have uh, come up with a, a way of uh, doing uh, just that to make it more available uh, for the body compared to other sorts of uh, ubiquinone. And they have a, a patent on that. And I will talk a little bit about that uh, later. But uh, that just basically means that they are the only ones who can use that um, patented uh, method uh, in order to make um, ubiquinone more uh, bioavailable uh, for uh, the body. And no, I am not sponsored. I, I have nothing to do with uh, ubiqu uh, ubiquinone uh, that is produced uh, by um, Pharma Noir. So uh, this uh, is basically, uh, and I will say that actually, uh, I will say something later that uh, is not uh, good news uh, for them uh, as such. So I uh, know this is not sponsored. So I am uh, normally using a product uh, from uh, Natural Factors and no, I'm not sponsored by them either. And uh, it looks uh, like uh, this. And it is a uh, ubiquinone, and uh, that uh, basically is because of uh, the thing that uh, ubiquinol would be taken into being uh, ubiquinone anyway. So I tried ubiquinol uh, at at some point, uh, but then I reversed uh, to to this here again uh, because of the uh, financial uh, issue. But uh, then I read a little bit more about it, and uh, I was thinking there was uh, a person that. Uh, put a little note uh, on the, the um, in the comments and said that uh, the body becomes uh, worse and worse at uh, converting uh, ubiquinone into ubiquinol and uh, yes that is true but uh, that is uh, when it is in the bloodstream that is not when you're taking it up so still when you're taking ubiquinol then uh, it will actually turn into ubiquinone before it goes into uh, the bloodstream so the thing is that uh, Pharmanor they have um, made this sort of a patent where they are making a, a version of uh, ubiquinone that is more bioavailable and the reason for that is basically that they are making the structure of the uh, the crystals uh, into a, a shape that is more like a, a needle shape compared to something that is more like a, a solid a rock a kind of like thing so a, a rhombo uh, sort of a shape as they uh, call it and that is basically a square sort of like a little bit like that 
So it means that basically it is a, a proper big crystal, where the other ones, they are sort of like um, needle shaped. And that means that when they go into the body, then they are dispersed much better at the body temperature. And uh, therefore the body can get hold of it a, a lot better. So in that sense, uh, it would be a, a good idea to take uh, the product from uh, Pharma Noah. However, uh, it is a little bit uh, expensive. However, uh, you might not need uh, that much of it compared to some of the other versions because uh, usually uh, the other versions or the problem with those is that when they're not using that patent, then basically uh, you might have uh, 100 milligrams, but uh, you only get maybe uh, 20 milligrams out of it because the rest of it is in this sort of a crystal uh, sort of shape that the body cannot uh, really uh, easily get a hold of. So you are basically wasting uh, a lot of it. So uh, there is just that little thing, and that is, I went in and I had a little look at the uh, patent and saw what are they actually doing. So basically, what they are doing is that they are, as other companies, they are diluting uh, the um, ubiquinone, so this uh, orange powder, into an oil. But uh, therefore, uh, they are going on to um, heating it up, and uh, the other companies, they are doing that as well. But what they are actually doing is that they are adding a, a little bit of a, a different oil. So it's still, uh, they are using soya oil. And just to briefly say that, I was a little bit concerned about that. But actually, uh, some of these uh, plant hormones that are in the uh, soya oil, they are actually saying that this is a very refined oil. So that is not a problem, because that has simply uh, gone uh, because of the uh, refinement of the oil that they are using. So that should not really be uh, an issue. But what they are doing then is that uh, they are taking about 75% uh, of the, the soy oil. So the soy oil that you would normally know as something that is uh, at room temperature, really sort of like a liquid. But then there is something called margarine oil. It's, that's sort of a stuff that you are using when you are frying. Uh, some people are doing that. Uh, I don't uh, use that sort of uh, stuff. But um, there uh, you are actually you're talking about uh, a trans fatty acid. So it's a uh, hydrogenated uh, oil. And what they're saying is that they are using uh, about 25% uh, uh, of that in the mix or, or something uh, like that. And that sort of a uh, mix uh, is further divided into two different kinds of hydrogenated oil. So two different kind of um, these sort of uh, trans fatty acids and uh, I understand uh, the, the reasoning behind it because the thing is that if you're having an oil then uh, these crystals they can uh, even that you have just warmed them up so they are not in this sort of like a crystal uh, form anymore just like if you're taking a uh, sugar and you put that uh, on a frying pan it will start to be a uh, liquid so it's kind of like uh, the same sort of a uh, process so what happens is that uh, when you're cooling that down again so you have diluted it in a hot oil and you cool it down again and you get these sort of um, crystals that are difficult for the body to, to deal with. So they realize that actually if they're adding a little bit of a trans fatty acid, then in the end they will get a, a sort of like a substance that is uh, not as liquid as oil, but not as um, tough as if you were talking about a uh, margarine or something like that. So you can like get a sort of like a mix and that means that uh, the uh, crystals will kind of like stay put as they were made when they uh, did uh, the process. And what they are doing at the same time is that they are uh, constantly stirring uh, this thing up here to make sure that the crystals that are forming they are these sort of like a needle uh, shaped uh, crystals and that means that uh, when they are having uh, the final product then uh, these crystals will stay in this sort of like needle shape uh, structure and that means that it's a lot better for uh, the, the body so it can take it up uh, a lot easier but yes we were talking about trans fatty acid and i think we all know that that is not something that is uh, good for the body so yes i understand that if you're having a little bit of trans fatty acid in a small pill and you're taking maybe one or two pills a, a day or maybe three then it, it might not make a huge difference but just to mention that it means that you are actually taking in uh, trans fatty acid. So if you uh, for some reason don't want that and I don't want that if I can avoid it I will avoid it. So I'm kind of like mm, yeah okay uh, I'm, I would like to find uh, another way uh, to deal uh, with this. So I read uh, a little bit more about the patent and I looked into a bit more about uh, ubiquinone or ubiquinol and uh, Q10 and that sort of thing and uh, what is actually going on and when you are reading uh, the patent and if you are looking uh, up uh, online on about uh, Q10 then we actually notice that uh, it is actually becoming uh, it's solid 
as the powder when you are buying it but you don't need to warm it that much in order to make it a liquid so uh, that means that the whole point is that as soon as uh, the uh, the crystals they become a uh, liquid just like sugar on a frying pan then uh, you don't have the, the issue with the, the crystals because uh, then you just have uh, the molecules so if you can uh, digest it in uh, a way where it is uh, in this sort of liquid form then obviously it's a, a whole lot uh, easier and better for for you so uh, there is also that uh, thing and i'm going to show you that later how i am actually dealing with a, a product uh, like this one here and you just uh, take one i mean this is sort of a classic uh, pill so you have these sort of uh, red colored ones or whatever and then they are completely orange inside because that is when uh, Ubiquinon, uh, that is the, the oxidized form that is uh, orange, whereas Ubiquinon is more like a, a whitish uh, sort of a uh, thing. So uh, the thing is that uh, you would like to take something that is um, sort of like uh, in a liquid uh, state because uh, then you don't have uh, the issues with uh, any sort of uh, crystals whatsoever. So uh, what can you actually do? Well, I'm actually going to show you a, a, a clip here and uh, you can see that uh, in the background here what is actually uh, going on. And the thing is that uh, I simply just took uh, one of these ones here and then I poked a bit, little bit of a hole in it so I could squeeze it out. And uh, what I did was that I took some sort of, uh, not boiling water, but a kind of like water that is maybe about uh, 60 degrees or something like that. So a, a lot warmer than you would have a, a bath, but uh, kind of like 60 or 70 degrees or something like that. And you simply just uh, squeeze this stuff uh, into it. And what happens is that straight away you will see it has this sort of a color as if you were just squeezing it out but very quickly it starts to become see-through like and uh, it's kind of like uh, as you can see in in the video that it kind of like it starts to become more and more a see-through but uh, when it's a little bit see-through you can still see some sort of like um, stuff in it and uh, when you just wait a little longer, then would, it would kind of like uh, start to completely uh, dissolve. And you can just, if you want, you can just shake the glass a little bit and then it will kind of like move and then it, it will help with the um, making uh, the, the crystal uh, into a, a liquid uh, instead. And uh, the good thing about it is that uh, this is something that is uh, oil soluble. So uh, this one here, it is, uh, I think it's a uh, flax oil or rice bran oil or, or something like that and that simply means that when you are putting this stuff into the water obviously um it will not uh, dilute into the water so we just kind of like stay put so it's a very sort of like very gentle and very very easy way of uh, making this um, solid stuff into something that is a liquid uh, instead and uh, there you go you just take a spoon and then uh, you have it and you can just uh, gobble it up it's pretty pretty uh, easy and i would say now normally i have taken about three of these a day so i think uh, three times uh, 100 milligrams a day but i realized that i was not getting that much into my body because of the crystal issue and that sort of thing so now when i'm a uh, doing this um, every time I, I do this uh, with the, the hot water, then uh, I will get a lot more um, of these uh, shoots in that you have here, so the ubiquinone uh, form uh, than I otherwise uh, would have. So maybe I could actually take a little bit less. Now, how much should you actually take? Well, I'm taking uh, 100 milligrams uh, three times a day. And uh, when I re read some of these uh, studies, and I think uh, Farmanor, they are linking to some of these uh, studies as well. And there were actually some, they were taking 200 milligrams and they uh, saw how much could you take up and you could take so and so much up of it and then they realized actually that if they were taking uh, 100 milligrams twice so with a bit of a space in between then actually the end result was that you were getting a lot more into your body than if you were taking uh, 200 milligrams in one go and that is simply because uh, the body can only take up a certain amount at a time and then uh, it has to be sort of like a uh, taken up and then it's ready to take a bit more more. So it's a good idea if you're taking a Q10 that you are dividing it uh, over the day. And I would say you should not take more than uh, 100 milligrams uh, in one go. So that is uh, basically what I am doing. And I heat it from now on. I'm heating it up uh, like this. And uh, I would say uh, it, it really, I, th I thought it was like, kind of like a light bulb uh, moment or Eureka moment, if you like. So uh, yes, I would say uh, this is really great. And uh, I said in the beginning that this is not good news for um, Farmanor. And the reason is, of course, that uh, 
the product formula has yes it might be convenient if you don't want to do this but this is really 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 simple i would say that you can get something that is hot almost uh, everywhere and certainly you can make a or you could boil a, a pot of water when you are home and if you're out and about you can uh, buy a hot coffee and you could, you could basically just pop it into there as well if you want to take something during the day and you are not home or you are away from the kettle or something like that so this is uh, basically uh, pretty easy to do so uh, i would say this is uh, actually um rather revolutionizing i would say but the thing is of course that uh, a product like this is a lot cheaper than uh, the stuff from uh, farmer noir and if you can just uh, do as i have shown you here then uh, you will save uh, a lot of money now there is just a little bit of another thing and that is actually that uh, you can also buy uh, you become known as a powder and that is a whole lot cheaper so i have actually just the other day i ordered something from a bulk supplement and again no i have nothing to do with them but they are selling uh, it in uh, a bulk so uh, that is a, a whole lot uh, cheaper so uh, i just couldn't really see who the producer of it was so i have asked them what it was and i'm waiting uh, for them to come back but uh, i'm pretty sure there are uh, various companies they are using this from uh, from uh, kanika this uh, american uh, company so uh, yes uh, i am waiting uh, for bulk uh, supplements to come back to me and tell me uh, what it actually is i hope definitely that it is from that company because uh, it means that uh, i can uh, make it a whole lot cheaper because this stuff here you're just i mean it's still it will not mix with water so you can just take the powder and then you can put it in uh, to water and it should end up with being a little sort of like a blob you can uh, eat uh, straight away so um, when i I have the powder i will uh, make another video and i will show you how it goes with it uh, doing that it might be a little bit more difficult and uh, in the end it might be that something like this is um, easier uh, to to deal with but uh, yes uh, let's see uh, in the uh, next video and uh, another video uh, i will also make is uh, where we are talking about uh, q10 and uh, nmn and that is because uh, you need nmn in order to uh, help uh, Q10, so the ubiquinol uh, becoming into ubiquinol, and I will talk uh, a little bit uh, more about that and why you need those two things uh, in combination. So yes, if you like to see more of this sort of videos, please subscribe to the bell and do other things. If you do not, you will be notified when I upload more of this sort of videos. Thank you for watching. See you. Bye.